Good afternoon. Thanks for having me on campus and a part of your program. Uh, I have a short uh, description. Uh, could have picked many, many topics to talk about technology and its effect on uh, humankind and society. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about background. Lockheed Martin, two companies, uh, born uh, right after the first flight of Kitty Hawk. Uh, Glenn Martin had a plane company, and the Lockheed brothers had a plane company. Both took their designs to the Wright brothers, wondering if they would fly. Uh, so it started in 1902. Uh, fast forward to today, uh, the largest uh, global security corporation. Uh, as you alluded, we do work uh, as an ongoing business enterprise. $45 billion a year in annual sales. And so on a marketing sense, we have to go out and win $140 million worth of new business every day to sustain our size. 140,000 employees. Uh, we have more software engineers than Microsoft working for Lockheed Martin under the current employment. So um, I could have chosen energy. I could have chosen climate. I could have chosen cyber technology. I could have chosen medical uh, science and research because we're involved in all of those. But I, I chose a topic uh, that starts uh, in, the, in the late 50s and works its way forward to today. And if uh, you don't believe that it's a contemporary conversation, on the 15th of April, President uh, Obama will be delivering a speech about a future vision in Florida relative to human spaceflight. So with that, I'm going to ask to uh, start a, a video that I brought. So following World War II, uh, both uh, allies, Russia and America, run into Germany, seize the scientists, uh, both start derivative programs, and in 1957, the Russians fly the first overhead satellite Sputnik and declare a high ground, uh, and the U.S. responds about a, a few months later with a project called Explorer 1, and the space race is born. Interesting thing, a few years ago, I was invited to the 50th anniversary of Sputnik. And for a global uh, conscious, it set off a reaction around the world that said, hey, the, you know, the world in which we live in is a different place. It introduced a new dimension, and this space we race set off We choose to go to the speech. moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. So in seven years, uh, from the speech at Rice University to landing a man on the moon, uh, it mobilized a, a country and in a whole uh, fabric of society around math, science, and technology. And at one point in time, it was the sole driver for university enrollment, and NASA was a large employer of mathematicians and scientists, and if you believe uh, the statistics, the derivative technologies born out of that era begets now digital phones, microprocessing, and software engineering, all out of a short period of time sustained by a speech and a vision delivered at a university. Um, and since then, uh, that first human space flight, 1962, we, in the period of the middle 60s, sent humans to space every six weeks as a run-up to the Apollo missions. So very high frequency. Um, and, and the other thing to comment, uh, a number of those astronauts are still alive and fighting for a future. <laughs>
first business plan written for the space shuttle 1972, first flight 1981, a reusable space plane. Most notable, the large tank built by Lockheed Martin. The flight of Kitty Hawk could occur inside of that tank from takeoff to landing in height dimension. The fuel propellant inside the external tank, liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. If you want a carbon-free uh, propulsion technology, space-based power, large solar arrays, lithium ion batteries. We were doing lithium ion batteries before lithium ion was cool. Um, human space flight, keeping humans present in space, uh, begets a radical field of medical research and sustainability, uh, air, uh, water. Uh, and then the other, the other feature that we showed was Hubble. And it was basically a conclusion that looking at deep space was like looking through the air at the bottom of a swimming pool. So when we put the Hubble space telescope up, we could see people. landing on the surface of Mars. Uh, Lockheed Martin was one of the, first the first organization to land on Mars. August 1976, two Viking landers dropped on Mars. We have built every device in the United States that has landed on Mars. We actually got to witness this last landing. We were flying Mars Reconnaissance Observer, which was actually looking at pebbles of sand with high resolution imagery. We were able to see our satellite with its parachute drag cord open and fly through the camera resolution and witness it land. That's, that is uh, a uh, world record, uh, galaxy record, a man-made device watching another man-made device landing on another planet with real-time video, high-def telecommunications back to Earth. Uh, and that was not that long ago. That satellite froze over the Martian winter and now it appears it'll turn back on. So, about the future. Uh, this has been going on since the, the 50s as a race. It needs a vision, it needs a calling. When the president gives his speech, it will be about continuing to explore the planets uh, to put humankind out, uh, not in our lifetimes, but maybe in several lifetimes from our following. There is gonna be the need to have the human being, the human species, move further away from planet Earth and, and discover habitable places to live. And as we challenge ourselves to think about those kinds of things, we can bring home the knowledge here about what it takes to be sustainable on Earth. And it challenges conventional wisdom in a sense that it says, this is what it takes to stay alive here on planet Earth. So I, I do appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and I'll be around, but I'm gonna conclude my remarks a few minutes early of the prompt. So thank you for having me.